Now we're going to show some applications of the isoparametric reduction in some kind of semilinear problems called Yamabe type problems. The Yamabe type problems on the sphere are given by this equation. It's an equation having a Laplacian plus a linear term and a nonlinear term of power type. Here, L will be positive and P is going to be bigger than one. Why are these problems important? One of the main problems in Riemannian geometry, in geometric analysis, is the Yamabe problem. Here we begin with a closed Riemannian manifold, a compact manifold without boundary. And this may have a really nasty scalar curvature. Here I draw this having these nasty curvatures. It is not constant. And then we consider, we try to look for a conformal change of metric in such a way that we are going to obtain a constant scalar curvature if we compute it in this conformal class. So why, uh, what is the relation between the equation that we are going to study and the Yamabe problem? Yamabe proved that uh, a metric, a conformal factor, factor given like this, satisfying that scalar curvature is constant, is given by the solution of this equation. This equation is again a power type equation. Here in the linear part, we have the scalar curvature. Here we have the, uh, the constant scalar curvature that we want to obtain. And we have here this guy, two star. Two star is 2m over m minus 2. This is the so-called critical Sobolev exponent. So the problem is equivalent to solving this kind of, of Yamabe type equations. So if we consider the function q given by arc, cosine composed with F, where F is an isoparametric function, then we are going to reduce this equation into this equation. This is a, a singular equation where HR, I recall, HR is given by a constant one, cosine r minus a second constant over sine of t of r. So it is going to be singular at zero and pi, but it is a it is an ODE. The ODEs are in general more mm, more easy, are easier to handle. So we are going to we are going to uh, to see what what can we obtain what properties do, can we obtain of this kind of the solutions to this to this manifold, to this equation. Our first application is the following: we are going to prescribe the geometry of the solutions and then the nodal domains of the solution. The nodal domains are domains uh, uh, where the solution has a constant sign. We're going to look for nodal solutions to this kind of equation. So if we fix an isoparametric hypersurface and we fix our favorite number, there is going to exist some power, Ps, 
in such a way that if we consider any t between these two guys, then there exists a solution of the Yamabe type problem with this power nonlinearity having exactly k nodal domains. I will, I will make a draw in order to, to clarify this. And all the connected components of the level sets of U are going to be isoparametric hypersurfaces, all diffeomorphic to S. Actually, they are all parallel. So how do we obtain this? We, what we actually do is that if we have here zero pi, we were able to obtain this kind of solutions having exactly k plus one zeros. So we have here these domains in which the sign of the solution is constant. Here is positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. Each of these, let's say, bumps, each of these regions are called nodal regions, nodal domains. So we are obtaining solutions with exactly k changes of sign and having exactly this kind of geometry behind. What is the idea here? The idea of the proof of this, of this kind of, uh, of, of equation is the following. This is called double shooting method. If we shoot a solution, if we try to look for a solution defined on this line, it will be really difficult to obtain it because we have a singularity here at zero and a singularity of the equation here at pi. So, what we naively can do is to shoot a solution starting from, from here. And we try to see if this solution can be continued over pi. But um, in general, these solutions are going to explode before pi. So if we if we can if we imagine that we have here two cowboys that are going to shoot each other, this guy starts shooting and wants to kill this other guy, but the bullet make this trajectory and it will not uh, and it will not hit the other uh, the other cowboy. And what happens? If the other cowboy starts shooting from here, he can shoot, here's uh, a bullet. And maybe it will explode near zero. So it is going, um, it will not touch this guy here. So the only way that they can kill each other is that we can, I see if we can find a proper initial condition here and a proper initial condition here in such a way that we can match each of these solutions. So uh, we make a phase plane analysis, a careful phase plane analysis in order to obtain the um, exactly which are these convenient um, initial condition and final condition in order that we are going to obtain a well-defined solution so that we can kill each other here. This is, mo this is more or less the idea of the solution. It is, a, it is really delicate, but we, we try to match some solutions start, starting from this initial condition with solutions starting at the, uh, at the final condition. Another kind of application is 
um, is when we consider some kind of more general operators that are called polyharmonic operators on the sphere. These operators are given by conformal Laplacian, by a product of conformal Laplacian. If each of these guys is zero, we actually have the K Laplacian. So it is, uh, we can iterate the application of the Laplacian and we obtain this kind of operators. Why are they important? These are, these kind of operators uh, can be obtained in a conformal way and they are related with something called co-curvature, which are another kind of conformal invariants for higher order operators. These are some general, uh, as they are a generalization of the scalar curvatures to, um, to more general operators on the sphere, uh, on manifolds. Sorry. So we study, uh, we study this. What we have seen is that we, we can reduce this Laplacian into a one dimensional Laplacian and into parametric Laplacian. So if we can reduce this Laplacian into a one dimensional Laplacian, we can reduce this polyharmonic operator into a polyharmonic operator in one dimension. And it is actually given by the isoparametric Laplacian, this one, by a product of, of isoparametric Laplacians. Yes. So this is the this is the isoparametric polyharmonic operator. What we have done is that we showed that some Sobolev spaces can be with, with symmetries are actually Sobolev spaces on one dimensional manifolds. To fix some idea, what we have done is the following. We consider these isoparametric functions on Rm plus one. So these are given by these guys and we have we have seen that the isoparametric hypersurfaces are given by products of the spheres. So they are also given, as Cartan showed, by the action of some groups of O n plus one of orthogonal groups. Then in this case, we can consider the Sobolev space with K derivatives. And we can also consider the Sobolev space with symmetries. We are going to look for functions which are gamma invariant. That is, if we consider you compose with one of these guys here, it is a group of isometries. We actually obtain that U is going to be constant on the orbit. So if we consider this and we give this Sobolev space, this equivalent norm given by this guy here, by this conformal polyharmonic uh, operator, what we have proved is that there is an isometry of this guy here with this norm with a Sobolev space defined on zero pi in such a way, in such a way that this guy here is a is a well-defined met is a well-defined norm to this space. So we have here an isometry, and we are actually saying that the space of gamma invariant Sobolev functions is actually a space of Sobolev functions defined on zero pi 
with a weight. This weight is given more or less like this. This weight is must, uh, must appear here because we want to control that we have some singularities at zero pi. So this, these guys appear here to control the singularities. So these are some of the results that we have obtained in the case of Riemannian manifold. And in the last video, we will show the, the application to the semi-Riemannian setting.